So the craziest thing happened in the house the other day. You had Pierre Polyev stack up against Justin Trudeau. And within Parliament, when they're debating, there's something called parliamentary language and parliamentary privilege. Parliamentary privilege means that you can make kind of slanderous accusations or defamatory comments about somebody, but it's protected. You're exempt from any lawsuit or any types of those repercussions because it's within parliament as long as it's context matters is pretty much what I'm saying. Parliamentary language means you can't use swear words. You can't use, you know, F-bombs or acronyms. It was once upon a time, Pierre Polyev said WTF. And then Mr. Speaker got really upset about that and said, you can't say that and he stood back up and said where's the funds but today or what happened in this video what happened in this very recent debate clip is Pierre probably have skirted the line and said some kind of really funny things that I never thought he would ever say in Parliament. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I do want to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already. I also just want to offer a gentle reminder that click and tap in that bell notification will add a layer of insurance so you can actually be notified of upcoming videos, but more importantly, live streams. Here on House of Canada, we live stream every single question period that happens. The community is growing. The com community is awesome and very enthusiastic the chat goes wild so you'll never miss a beat you'll always be kept in the loop as to what's happening so the thing that Pierre Polyev says is orgy yeah that's right it was it was very weird he said 50 billion dollar orgy of spending and Pierre just absolutely mocks Trudeau with the new budget but before we get into the clip I do have a message from today's sponsor this video is brought to you by Private Internet Access. We've teamed up together and are willing to offer my audience 83% off using the code House of Canada, which can be found linked down in the description or the pinned comment below. There's no easy way of putting this. Justin Trudeau is trying to censor the internet and he's trying to implement a digital ID. And the only way that you can actually really protect yourself online is through a VPN. And my go-to VPN is private internet access. Now, those who don't know what a VPN is, it acts as a way to encrypt your data, which means that all the big tech companies, including the government, can't access your information. Your information bounces around from IP address to IP address. And it doesn't just act as a way to protect yourself Yourself, but it's also a way to access content which you wouldn't regularly be able to get because of geolocation restrictions such as Netflix or Disney. I know a lot of people in Canada want to access the American stuff and the only real way to do that is with a VPN and it is so user friendly with private internet access. You can have it on your phone, your tablet, all of your devices, your computers, etc. Just be sure to use House of Canada as your code which should be linked down in the description or the pinned comment below to get yourself 83 percent off with private internet access thank you private internet access for sponsoring today's video without further ado let's take a look at this hilarious debate clip here we go who pays for this latest 50 billion dollar orgy of spending by this costly prime minister we know it won't pay it won't be those with trust funds that protect their millions of inheritance like the prime minister nor the billionaires that invite him to their private Carib caribbean islands they'll, they'll hide their money you know who will pay? You will pay. You, the welder or waitress who can't pay your mortgage because he's inflated the mortgage rates. You will pay because he carbon taxed your food and now you can't feed your kids. Why should you pay for him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my comment still uh, still applies. Uh, the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it is interesting to see the lengths to which the Leader of the Opposition will go to avoid saying that he is choosing to stand with the ultra-wealthy, against the middle class, against young Canadians. Uh, it, when we first got elected and raised taxes on the wealthiest 1% to lower them for the middle class, the Conservative Party and that Leader voted against it. We are asking asking uh, for the wealthiest in this country, the wealthiest 0.1% to pay more in taxes so we can support the middle class, so we can restore the dream, particularly for young people, of home ownership, of a brighter future that the world is taking away from people all over the world. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. P Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister likes to blame the world for the problems <laughs> that he caused. He doubled 
the debt, doubled the rent, doubled mortgage payments, doubled the needed down payment, and now he's doubling down on the same costly mistakes that have made life unaffordable for Canadians. When will this Prime Minister realize that he's not worth the cost and that repeating the same thing nine times and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity? The right, the right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, what the Leader of the Opposition is saying is that he stands with the ultra-wealthy 0.1% in this country and everyone else is on their own, because that's what he would do as he slashes programs, as he slashes investments, as he doesn't build the homes necessary, as he doesn't have a plan to fight climate change and create good jobs, as he has stood against affordability measures, as he stands against seniors getting dental care, Mr. Speaker. He is choosing to stand with the ultra-wealthy while we are investing in Canadians and building a stronger future that is fair for everyone. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he is the ultra-wealthy. He hid his family fortune in a tax-sheltered trust fund so he wouldn't have to pay the same tax as everyone else. He vacations with the ultra-wealthy on their private islands in tax-preferred locations where they can hide their money and avoid paying their fair share here in Canada. And now he's paying off the, the ultra-wealthy by spending $54 billion on debt interest more than on health care. Why give more money to the ultra-wealthy bankers and bondholders instead of the nurses and doctors? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, this is a budget that invests in fairness for every generation by asking the ultra-wealthy to pay a little more. Young people see right through this, Prime Minister. They know they're getting ripped off, and they know the reason for it. Today, rent is doubled, grocery prices are sky high, and we're paying some of the highest cell phone bills in the world. The reason is because of corporate greed. This Prime Minister refuses to take it on, and the Conservatives, they're afraid anytime we mention corporate greed because they want to defend those corporations. I know what happens. Anytime I take on corporate greed, the Conservatives get really upset because we're taking on their masters, so they get upset about it. But I'll be careful not to say too much because I know the Conservatives get so angry when we mention corporate greed. But what happens is young people are seeing they're getting ripped off with rent, they're getting ripped off with groceries, getting ripped off with, with the high cost of cell phone fees, and they no, it's because of corporate greed. The Conservatives don't want me to talk about this, but will the Liberals take on corporate greed, which is driving up the cost of living? There was a, a bunch, like hundreds of other awesome, really like banger debating uh, points that happened within this, uh, this one question period, but I've tried to condense it into a few highlights. So stick around for the rest of the video because Pierre Polyev absolutely smokes Justin Trudeau. Here we go. After nine years and much spent, not a single meal served. Right. What he has served up is a tax on the food of the very children he claims to want to help. A tax that will cost every single middle class family more than they get back in rebates, according to a scientific study by the Parliamentary Budget officer, a tax he increased by 23 percent. If he really wants to stop the hunger for one in four kids in schools today, will he ax the tax? <clears throat> Make life a little affordable for kids, right? Just this past Monday, millions of Canadians received the, Can the Canada carbon rebate uh, in their bank accounts. That puts... Yeah, right, dude. Eight out of ten Canadian families across... I'm going to do a poll in the live stream chat right now about this. ...budget officer. Eight out of ten families, which is middle class and lower income families. But the leader of the opposition chooses to stand once again with the wealthiest families, the ones with uh, big indoor swimming pools and nine big cars. Those are the things they're choosing to stand with uh, because we're putting more money back in the pockets of Canadians. What is this guy going on about, man? The leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister thinks anyone who puts gas in their car is rich and needs to be made poor. <laughs> 
He thinks any single mother who's not already yep. pouring water in her children's milk is too rich, and he wants to make her poorer. Yep. He thinks that families that are heating their homes in big, cold Canada are too rich, and he wants to make them poor. A little bit rich, coming from the guy who stuffed his family fortune in a tax-sheltered trust fund and helps his billionaire island friends avoid paying their bills. So why doesn't he stop taking from the have-nots to give to the have-yots? Have yeah. Yeah. The right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, in this budget, we're proposing to ask the ultra-wealthy to pay more in taxes to support uh, lower-income Canadians and middle-class Canadians, something that the Conservatives are standing against, Mr. Speaker. They choose to stand with the ultra-wealthy while we continue to invest in supports for families. We've uh, cut the child poverty rate in half uh, since 2016. We've continued to move forward on investing in uh, supports for families right across the country. And with this budget focused on fair for every generation. We're continuing to do exactly that, despite the opposition of the Conservatives. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. It's not the opposition of the Conservatives he needs to worry about. It's the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. Quote, mm. on the carbon tax in particular, the Prime Minister has tried to bait me at times with certain ad hominems and name-calling almost. Right. But look, we have a very different opinion on the carbon tax. I wish the Prime Minister would understand that. He's being very sclerotic in his approach and on this ideological marriage that he has to this carbon tax. Mr. Speaker, will he end his ideological marriage with the carbon tax so that Canadians can eat, heat, and house themselves? Yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I am resolute that I will fight climate change and put more money back in the pocket. I am tax man. No, 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 no. Welcome to come forward with a plan to put a price on pollution uh, that meets the levels required uh, by the federal government uh, instead of complaining. Uh, but that is what we will continue to do. We will ensure that a price on pollution that puts more money back in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadians, including in Newfoundland and Labrador, continues to be in place right across the country because that's what Canadians need for a stronger future and for affordability. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Parliamentary Budget Officer confirms, in fact, that six out of ten Canadians pay more in carbon tax than they get back in rebates. One hundred percent of middle class or middle quintile Canadians pay more in tax than they get back, with it being especially bad for rural and suburban Canadians. And now we have two-year highs in gas prices all across Ontario. Ontarians punished because of a 23% carbon tax. They can thank him every time they fill up the tank. Why won't he ax the tax so that Ontarians can afford to drive to work? Hey. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Ontario is an excellent example of a jurisdiction that chose to move forward with its own cap-and-trade system so they would not be subject to uh, the, carb the federal carbon pricing backstop. But it was the choice of a Conservative Premier to scrap uh, the carbon pricing system that they had uh, that took on the federal par carbon pricing backstop. But that's not all bad, Mr. Speaker, because that actually puts more money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Ontario families, uh, which is something that the Parliamentary Budget Officer has confirmed repeatedly. Mr. Speaker, we're fighting climate change and putting more money back in people's pockets. Bro, not one person actually agrees that you're putting more money in people's pockets. Austerity is what people are living every day when they can't afford to eat, heat, or house themselves after nine years of this Prime Minister, but when they pay the GST, they assume that they're getting something in return. It turns out that they pay $54.1 billion in GST, and it costs them $54.1 billion in interest on the national debt. Does the Prime Minister realize that not one penny from the money Canadians pay in GST goes to valuable services it all goes to pay wealthy bankers. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Why is Trudeau ignoring everything that Pierre says? 
In the face of the challenges Canadians are struggling with every single day, the solution by the Conservatives is... Less government. To do less. To yes. To less in, can, in supporting Canadians. Yes. Less for seniors and dental care. Yes. Less for childcare spaces. Less to invest in yes. medical supports and in health care. Less to invest in building more homes. The solution proposed by the Conservatives is for government to do less for Canadians. Yes. We're continuing to invest in people no. responsibly with the best... We don't want that. <laughs> ...at debt to GDP and the G7. We will continue to do Less is more. Less is more, folks. Less government. Less for bankers and bondholders, Mr. Speaker. More for doctors and nurses. This year, for the first time in over a generation, the federal government will spend more on interest for the national debt than we do on health care. After he doubled the size of the debt and grew health spending slower than the previous Conservative government. Mm -hmm. Why is it that he wants to give 54 billion hard-earned Canadian tax dollars to wealthy bankers and bondholders and not doctors and nurses? Yeah. <laughs> right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, that would perhaps be a more credible partisan argument if it wasn't for the fact that the Conservative Party consistently stood against investments to support Canadians. If the dental care program we're putting forward that's going to help already the 1.7 million seniors who've signed up, the Conservatives have not only voted against, but are busy spreading misinformation and disinformation uh, to yeah, try yeah, and scare yeah. people out of that program for partisan gains. The fact is, we're going to continue to invest in child care spaces because that helps families. We're going to continue to invest in, student de in, in supporting students so they have less debts. We're going to build more homes. They want to do that. The Honourable Member for vaudreuil Sauvage. I don't get why Trudeau doesn't understand that Canadians want less government. It's pretty freaking simple, man. Resource. <clears throat> to take advantage of it's called a free market and hard work in order to keep our position at the head of the world's advanced economies. Can the Prime Minister tell the House about the new measures in the budget which will support not only our workers but also the Canadian economy? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the member for vaudreuil soulanges for his question and his hard work. Yesterday's budget included clear commitments to invest in our future and in the talents of Canadian workers. However, the Conservative leader said that he would that he will be voting against supporting Canadian tech, clean tech businesses, that he will be voting against our investments in AI, that he will be voting against people who are working in our EV supply chains. We are investing to help all Canadians succeed in the 21st century, but the leader of the opposition wants to bring us back to the Stone Age. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker. David Dodge, proud Liberal and former Liberal appointee as Governor of the Central Bank, said that this would be the worst budget in over 40 years. It turned out he was right. We've had John Manley, who said the Prime Minister is pushing on the inflationary gas pedal, Manley being a former Liberal finance minister. <laughs> now we even have Bill Morneau condemning the government of which he was the former finance minister. Mr. Speaker, why is it that so many liberals have... They're all against it. That this prime minister is not worth the car. <laughs> Everybody's against it except for Trudeau and Freeland. Prime minister. Mr. Speaker, there are people like the Conservative Party of Canada that are going to choose to stand with the ultra-wealthy and not stand with young people who need uh, better supports as we ensure more housing, uh, more investments, uh, more opportunities for them to succeed in an economy that is increasingly tilted. Why does Gilbo wealthy look like he's a toddler in a timeout? Class. That's why we're. Or he's been caught doing something. And put money in the pockets of Canadians that he shouldn't have. Uh, by asking the wealthiest <laughs> to pay a little bit more, something the Conservatives will continue to stand against because they stand with the ultra wealthy. Your Gilbo looks like my toddler. <laughs> She's throwing a tantrum. All the adults in the Liberal and NDP parties are saying that this budget is irresponsible. Yeah, yeah. We have 
John Manley, former Liberal Finance Minister, saying tr this Prime Minister is pushing on the inflationary gas pedal. David Dodge, renowned Liberal, is saying it could be the worst budget in four decades. Bill Morneau, remember him? And before he became Bill No More, he said this <laughs> oh. is a budget. And even Tom Mulcair says that there's too much going to debt interest. Isn't this like the NDP liberal marriage? The parents went away and the rambunctious, restless kids went and trashed the place? Bill No More. <laughs> Holy crap, man. You know what, Chad? Drop a W. Drop a W in the chat. That was awesome. Wow. He's getting a standing O. Drop some W's in the chat. Let's go. Wake up, folks. Minister. Let's increase the enthusiasm. The opposition continues to focus on partisan attacks. We're going to stay focused on building a better future for Canadians. Speaking of inflation, Mr. Speaker, this is the third month in the row in which inflation has been within uh, the Bank of Canada's target range. That is because we continue to govern responsibly in a fiscally sound way uh, that is uh, at the forefront of the G7, even as we step up to invest in Canadians and in their future. Confident countries invest in themselves and their people, Mr. Speaker. That is what we are doing while the Conservatives propose to do less, uh, to invest less, to support Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, it's not me that's doing personal or partisan attacks against this Prime Minister's agenda. It's his fellow Liberals and New Democrats. It's his coalition partner who simultaneously attacks everything he does and then enthusiastically enthusiastically stands up to support it. It's the Prime Minister who attacks his Immigration Minister for letting the system get completely out of control and then attacks himself for doubling housing costs, making life so unfair. <laughs> They're so busy attacking themselves and their own record. Why don't they just call a carbon tax election so Canadians can vote? Yeah! Look at that standing. Oh, get the W's flowing, folks. Come on, let's see a wave of W's in the chat. Pierre's on fire today. If you think you're right, Trudeau, call a carbon tax election. Excuse me. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, this government is making the choice to invest in a fairer future for all Canadians, for every generation. That is the choice we are making. Now, uh, the uh, Conservatives are continuing to choose to stand with the wealthiest in this country, choose to do less to invest in childcare, less to invest in solving the housing crisis, less to support young people uh, across the country who need to feel uh, the opportunities they can build in the future again. We will continue to be there, to put money in the pockets of Canadians, to put homes in their communities, to build a stronger future for them and their families, while the Conservatives continue to promote cuts and austerity. That, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between is where we're going to end today's video. On your way out, I'd like to encourage you guys to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already, as well as one last thank you to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.